Many people know the name Thomas Merton. Merton was a Roman Catholic priest and monk who lived in the last century. He remains a widely popular spiritual writer today. I think part of Merton's uniqueness was that before he became a monk, he was a journalist. So his writing has a freshness to it and a clarity that makes it accessible for many people. And so Merton is able to write about the depths of spirituality and contemplative practice in a way that remains open to people that they can see their own experience in what he's writing about. Many people don't realize this, but Merton died in 1968 in Thailand. His monastery was in Kentucky, but he was in Thailand with a number of other Christian monks who were meeting with Buddhist monks. And they were there to do contemplative practice together, to sit in meditation together, and to share about the experience of the, their contemplative practices. The word didn't exist in 1968, but that is what we call today interspirituality or in the interspiritual. Today, I want to talk about interspirituality and what that looks like for us today. And as I do that, I want to invite you to subscribe to this channel as well as to click the bell so you're notified of future videos. The term interspiritual was coined in the 1990s by another monk by the name of Wayne Teasdale. Teasdale himself blended practices from Christianity and Hinduism, but he had a knowledge of, a working knowledge of many world religions and was involved in, in uh, many international gatherings of religious individuals, but his focus was on this common experience that he called the inner spiritual. Now, interspirituality is different from interfaith. They, they really shouldn't be confused. Interfaith looks at the common and different practices between and among religions. So it focuses more on the dogma and the understanding and the ritual practices. But interspirituality goes a lot deeper. It's really looking at the common experience, what it is to live the contemplative life within different traditions. You know, so what is it that contemplation and meditation, what's it like for a Hindu, for a Buddhist, for someone who's Jewish, for someone who's Christian? How is it similar? How is it different? What do each of these traditions teach about that inner life, that inner working at the contemplative, deeper spiritual level? That's what inner spirituality is all about. Interspirituality, I think, is actually more common than we realize. I mean, you first hear the term and you think, yeah, that sounds a little bit on the edge. I don't know what that's really about. But it's something that's become very common in practice. Think about it for a moment. Many people know about mindfulness. You know, if you look on LinkedIn, you see people talking about mindfulness and HR staff members teach mindfulness in the workplace because it's a benefit to productivity. So there, there are lots of ways mindfulness is being taught in medical settings and mental health settings. But mindfulness essentially is a Buddhist practice. That's where mindfulness is drawn from. And it's out of that Buddhist practice that there's something that's been valuable, that been, been found that's being applied in many situations. Similarly, many people today do yoga. They do at the exercise form of yoga. Yoga is a Hindu practice. They may learn about it on YouTube or in their gym or in some other place, but yoga is a very popular practice today. And it's Hinduism. Now, within Hinduism, yoga is much broader than just the exercise, but the exercise is one path within yoga. So people will practice mindfulness, they'll practice yoga, and then perhaps at home at night before bed, they'll say a, a familiar prayer from their Jewish or Christian tradition or from wherever it's from. 
And putting all of that together is what interspirituality is about. I believe that interspirituality is the movement into the future. And that's essentially why I developed this uh, channel, uh, Spirituality Beyond Borders, because I wanted to look beyond the, t con the traditional borders of religion more broadly at spirituality, but also to include the psychological aspect. But this movement into the future and in interspirituality isn't just my perception. One of my favorite theologians, Karl Rahner, really addressed this whole movement into the future and what we now know as interspirituality. Rahner was writing in the middle of the last century before we had this term interspirituality. And one of the things that Rahner was looking at was the way in which Christianity was beginning to fray. He was really trying to help to reshape Catholicism and make it more contemporary, but he also saw that people were increasingly disenfranchised from church, that they were no longer attending churches as they once did. And as he looked into the future, one of the things he observed was that the Christian of the future, if such a person exists at all, will be a mystic. Rahner saw that the Christian of the future would be a mystic. Now, what did he mean by that? A mystic is someone who understands the direct experience of the divine in their life, who knows that inner dimension, that contemplative dimension where someone experiences the reality of God within their own life, and that that would be the focus. And what's evolving is that there is this focus, but not just within Christianity. It's happening across traditions into what we now know and call the interspiritual. So interspirituality, I believe, is the movement into the future and will draw on many other disciplines, including psychology and sociology, as a new integration of spiritual practices begins to, begins to and continues to emerge. So today I want to ask you to think about your own experience. What are ways in which you have incorporated into your life spiritual practices or, or ways of being mindful that are drawn from other traditions other than the one you grew up in or the one that's most familiar to you? Are there, way, are there ways that these things come together to help make you a full, whole person? And how is it that you understand this integration of practices from various sources? That's the heart of interspirituality. Be sure to subscribe to this channel. I hope you'll like this video and share it with others. Leave me some comments about your understanding of interspirituality and know that I really appreciate that you took time to be here today. Thanks and have a great day.